Hi everyone, Dr. Emmy from Pain Free and Fit. Today, a great video for those of you with lower back, herniated, bulging, and degenerative discs. We're going to be talking about how to construct a basic low back reflexive stability exercise program where you can learn how to protect your lower back not only when you're actually thinking about it, like in the gym before you set yourself, but also during tasks where perhaps you may not be thinking about it. Hope you enjoy. So we went over a basic exercise for reflexive spinal stability for low back spondylolisthesis a few weeks ago. Today we're going to take that idea and we're going to apply it to disc problems, degeneration, herniation, and bulges. Now again, this training should be very specific and targeted for your unique needs. Everyone's neutral spine is different. Some of us have pain more with flexion, lateral flexion, rotation. Some of us have a weak multifidus, an overactive oblique muscle, a weak glute on the right but not on the left, an overactive lat on one side. So you really need a body analysis to figure out how to set your reflexive training up. With that said though, we're going to figure out today two basic problems that are very common with many people with disc problems and we're going to apply that to reflexive training. The first is flexion. Many people with disc problems have problems when their torso bends forward. So they start doing exercises which extend the spine to try to build the muscles up to prevent flexion. And that's great when you're consciously thinking of it, but many times disc injury happens not when we're in the gym and setting our posture up and our core stability that's unique for us when we're exercising, but it's when we're bending over to brush our teeth. It's when we're reaching at the sink at home. It's when we're at the gym where we're reaching for a five pound plate and we're not thinking about it because it seems so trivial to just bend down and we bend a little too far or in the wrong torquing direction or too much lateral tilt and we pinch the disc causing that fluid to move over or we pinch the facet joint and aggravates pain. Another problem with some people is too much posterior pelvic tilting. They've done too much ab work for instance, not enough extensor work and their pelvis actually tilts under and if you tilt the tailbone under and you flatten the lower back curve with the pubic bone up in what's known as a posterior pelvic tilt which is given unfortunately to a lot of disc patients that are aggravated with flexion, inaccurate exercise, that causes pain. So our second scenario we'll teach today is how to reflexively train that ability to keep the tailbone up. Now there are exercises like reverse hypers and a whole bunch that we've shown on the channel including hip extensions that train the pelvis to move up and train the extensors to prevent that motion. And those are great exercises again while you're consciously thinking, but what happens many times is you're not consciously thinking. So this exercise, reflexive stability training, develops our central nervous system's ability to train our muscles, our core muscles that prevent our improper patterns or improper motions of pain to correctly get those core muscles engaged even when we're not thinking about it. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to begin by using a stability surface to stand on. Now in this case I have an Airx pad that's a rehab pad that has a very foamy like consistency to it. It gives you a little wobble when you stand on it. If you're at home and you don't have an Airx pad or a foam rehab pad you could use a bunch of couch or sofa pillows you could use a bunch of big towels, bath towels, or beach towels laid on top of each other. But the idea is you want to stand on something that has a little bit of wobble and give to it. Again, with all reflexive training, we don't want to wobble more than a quarter to one inch because if we're going too far, we may actually lose our neutral position and hurt ourselves. To begin with, we're going to set ourselves in a neutral position. Now, remember that's custom for everybody. If you don't know what your neutral position is, is work with a rehab expert or take the free body analysis available at painfreeandfit.com. That will help guide you in terms of discovering what your neutral spine position is and what your body mechanics are that are aggravating your pain. But you need to set that. Now for me, I'm going to be setting my left hip down, left rib up, and my multifidus muscle on my left side. Those things need to be set so I don't have my hip come up on the left, lean to the left, or lose my multifidus contraction because I know that's going to bother my disc problem in my lower back you are going to be different. You may have to have a glute activation or a lat activation or deletion or external oblique deletion. We're all different. So you get your neutral spine on and let's take the two examples today of working with flexion because that's inherent to many, not all, disc problems. So let's say in the first example, I know that bending forward from the waist, besides those other things I talked about, typically aggravates my disc pain. So I know I want to make sure I train my torso, meaning my upper body, my rib cage, my thoracic spine, my lumbar spine, in extension from the top, meaning that leaning the ribs back 
is going to protect me from leaning ribs forward. So I want to develop the muscles in my basic exercise routine that are extensors, right? And there's a whole bunch of exercises that do that. But for reflexive training, I'm going to take a band and you're going to use something that's light, not a lot of resistance, a simple loop, and you're going to wrap it around yourself so you have the resistance point towards the shoulders or the top of the torso. Now the reason I'm going to choose this area to put the band in this first example is because that's going to pull, see what the band does? It wants to pull my torso forward. So it's throwing me into a damaging position. And the way I'm going to avoid that is, of course, by keeping my torso up. So I have a little resistance. I'll feel my extensor muscles in my lower back, my hamstrings, my glutes. When properly activated, they'll all hold my body upright. They're preventing this from happening. And what I'll do is I'll start with a wide stance, and I'm going to look for a stance or a position of stability or a technique of stability training that allows me, as I said, about a quarter inch to an inch of wobble or perturbation. Once I'm there, I'm just going to stay there. Now, if I don't feel anything with my feet apart, I'm going to start bringing them together until I feel a little bit of wobble happening. Okay? And as I'm consciously thinking of keeping the spine straight in extension and avoiding flexion, my nervous system is feeding those muscles that information and there's reflexes happening as the band starts to pull me a little bit and as I consciously think that are developing to hold me erect and avoid flexion. I can advance this training when this gets easy by putting my feet totally together, by raising one foot up, or even closing my eyes. Any of those techniques can be used to increase the wobble and as you get better and better you can use those techniques to increase the wobble. I can train stability training reflexively like this on a daily or a multi-time during the day frequency because this is not a fatigue exercise. I'm not demanding such intensity or volume that it's going to fatigue me. So therefore it's more of a coordination exercise. And the goal is in this first example to just hold that extension. The amount of extension, again, is going to be in your neutral position. So if you have too much extension and you start to feel back pain and you start to flex and there's back pain, you want to go right in the middle or upright, erect, typically is where you're going to be. If, on the other hand, we want to train the lower body, meaning the pelvic tilt to avoid too much flexion, we can put the band lower down. Now here, the band is underneath my buttocks. What that's doing is it's trying to pull my pelvis into a posterior pelvic tilt. It wants to pull my tailbone under and pubic bone up and decrease the arch of my back, flexing my lower back from the bottom. So here I'm thinking about not only all my RPI and neutral spine positions that I've set up that are unique to me, but in addition, I'm tilting the tailbone up with tension to resist the band from pulling me under. How much exactly? Well, if too much tail under starts to bother my back, I stop at that point and I go tail up, I feel a little discomfort on my back, I'm going to put it right between the two. That's the mid or neutral range of motion in that unique plane of stability. And I'm going to hold that. And again, I use the same technique. I can bring my feet closer together until I feel a little wobble. I could stand on one leg to feel a little wobble. I could close my eyes with both feet down, with wide feet close my eyes, or even close my eyes and tap onto something for a little extra stability with one leg up. The whole time I'm consciously thinking about keeping that tailbone slightly up to avoid the tailbone under. Over time what this is going to do is you'll need less and less conscious thought and it'll become more reflexive. The nice part about this is that once you get done with your reflexive training, and you could do that for several minutes at a time, or in as little as 15 to 30 seconds, reps is once you get off that stability you're going to find that your body is still a little bit geared up reflexively with tension of keeping that tailbone up if I was just doing that last example or my torso up in the first example and when I start to move from here to bend to lift I'm going to notice it's a lot easier to hold that position it's as if you awaken the nervous system to hold yourself in that way and that's a great warm-up before you go into the gym because before you go to the gym, you want to get that spinal stability set so that you're less likely to hurt yourself. If you've enjoyed this video on degenerative herniated and bulging discs self-rehab exercise, feel free to subscribe to the channel. You've got a lot of great videos out there to help you. 
questions or comments, write in as always. I'll do my best to answer. And remember, if you're looking for a great program to figure out what your body mechanics are, where your muscle imbalances and spinal stability issues are, where your posture and movement patterns are aggravating your back pain and disc injury, check out our Fast Track program for degenerative discs. It's applicable not only to degenerative discs, but bulging and herniated discs. It's all part of the same continuum available at painfreeandfit.com. It has all the exercises and the self-analysis you'll need to figure out what's aggravating your back pain from a mechanical perspective and the success of exercises you'll need to build a routine to ensure healing as well as get you back into shape without hurting yourself. And as always, I'm available for online consultations through Zoom if you are having difficulty with your analysis of your body or with implementing the exercises. I hope this video on stability training, the basics of it from a reflexive standpoint, helps you with your chronic low back disc pain.